Welcome to the Creative Thinking Podcast with Kim Thomas, a resource of the Village Chapel in Nashville, Tennessee. In each episode, we seek to inspire, inform, and encourage creative thinking from a biblical perspective. Using the scriptures as our guide, this season, we are walking with Jesus through some of His last encounters, His resurrection appearances, and finally, His ascension into heaven. Visit our website to learn more about the Village Chapel or to find today's show notes. Now, here's Kim. At the beginning of the story in John 21, Peter says to the others, I'm going fishing. That was a short clip from my friend Charlie Peacock's moody and stunning jazz album, Trout Creek Ranch, which I'll post in the show notes for you. This could be the soundtrack for the story of Peter and Jesus in this encounter on the shore of the Sea of Galilee. It is here that Peter experiences the lavish gift of forgiveness and introduces all of us to the possibility of grace in the context of repentance. Charlie's piano improvisation is entitled Grace Over Karma. The last encounter Peter had with Jesus before the cross and resurrection was a personal spiritual failure. Jesus warned Peter that he would deny Jesus three times before cock crow. And to Peter's staunch denials, as the cock crowed, Peter was mid-third denial when he looked up across the courtyard to lock eyes with Jesus. And so Peter was back doing the only thing he felt confident doing. He was fishing. And yet we find him at the end of a failed night of even that. Surely Peter was frustrated and swirling in his thoughts. When John spoke up and said the man on the shore who had just shouted to them to throw their nets to the other side of the boat was the Lord, you could almost feel the hope and possibility swell up in Peter's chest. It sent him diving over the boat and swimming to shore to see, maybe, all was not lost for Peter. The story was familiar. Jesus was recreating the first time he had called Peter. A failed night of fishing and the turn of events when the stranger suggested casting their nets on the other side. All of this may have been in Peter's mind, his first calling, and now the possibility of restoration. We don't really know. Peter might not have realized the desperation driving his sudden morning swim. But what is undeniable is that when we are separated from Jesus, a true repentance will drive us to seek his face again, whether we immediately know what to say or not. I think Charlie's song so fits the mood of what was happening with Peter on the shore of Galilee. As Peter made his way to shore, and then the others, the disciples then shared breakfast with Jesus that morning. Quietly aware that it was him 
They simply enjoyed the feast of his presence. But after breakfast, Jesus broke the silence. Jesus asked Simon if he loved him. Peter might have held his breath a little. Why is he calling me Simon? Possibly, Jesus was saying in a subtle way, Are you still my disciple? Or have you left me? Regardless, Peter jumped at the opportunity to reaffirm his love for Jesus. Jesus then invited him to the work again. Feed my lambs, he said. Peter must have let out that breath he was holding here. Thank goodness I'm back in. But before he could take in yet another breath, Jesus asked asked him again, Simon, do you love me? And Peter stepped up, a firmly, clearly said, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus also stepped up his invitation. Tend my sheep. As Peter was absorbing this, Jesus was right back at him a third time with, Do you love me? This time, Peter was hurt. Grieved, the scripture tells us. It would seem that it had not dawned on Peter that Jesus was responding to Peter's three denials, to the intensity of what he had done, the grievousness of Peter's own acts, his three denials until this moment. And he affirmed for the third time his love for Jesus. Feed my sheep, Jesus replied. Jesus had told the once distanced disciple to feed his lambs, tend his sheep, and feed his sheep. It was a welcome recommissioning. We remember here the Sermon on the Mount Jesus taught them when he said, Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. You see, when Peter finally came to the point of mourning his sin, Jesus comforted him, restored him, recommissioned this bold and incredibly important disciple for all of the church. Grace over karma, like the title of Charlie's song, that truly is the gift of the gospel. Jesus, in his death and resurrection, came to rescue us from being uncertain victims of karma to undeserving recipients of grace, like Peter. Do we live in the beauty of that grace, or do we live like victims of karma? Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, your kindness that draws us to repentance and then generously gifts us with your forgiveness is a mercy we can never thank you enough for. In our daily moments of failing, of being self-serving, self-focused, self-first, Holy Spirit, would you woo us and draw us to the hopeful shore of repentance? that we could once again affirm our love for you, our Savior, and that we could then rest and walk in your grace, not live in the fearful uncertainty of karma. We are so forever grateful and thankful, Jesus. And we pray all of these things in your name. Amen. Thanks for listening to today's episode. Be sure to subscribe, leave a review, and share this episode with friends and family. You can stay connected by signing up for our newsletter or following us on social media. For more resources or to support our ministry, visit our website, 
thevillagechapel.com.